in baseball. Welcome to Natstown. Sure good to be back home. Long home stand that'll take the Nationals right up to the All-Star break. The hammer's ready. Christian Guzman back in the top of the lineup. And David Wright leads the National League in RBIs. But the Nats lead the Mets 5-3 in the season series this year. Bob Carpenter, Rob Dibble. Uh, June's over. 8-19. and 19. Time to forget about that. It's a new month, a new home stand, and hopefully a new life for this ball club. Oh, yeah. And, you, you know, you're playing a team. Uh, that's got a lot of injuries, a lot of guys that aren't going to be in the lineup tonight. The Phillies have some guys going down. Chase Utley now is going to have surgery on his thumb. So you have a chance to make up some ground right before the All-Star game. And, uh, you know, no, no better time than a team that's in your own division and you can start to catch up in some games. Levon Hernandez, last homestand, looking pretty good against Kansas City. He pitched seven innings, only gave up a run on eight hits and struck out five. Well, he loves his home turf, uh, and, the, and the Nats do really well when he's pitching here, and there you see the big overhand curve. It's just a question of a comfort zone, and I think the Nationals going into a comfort zone here, ten, ten last games before the All-Star break. If you could win six of them, would get you to 40 wins before you go on the three-day break, and I think that would be great if they could get up to 40 wins. Levon followed that up by not being able to hold a lead at Baltimore, got a no decision against the Orioles. Now, troubled times off the field for Johan Santana. Not the greatest of years on the turf. Five and five with a three and a half ERA. And the Nats have already beaten him once this year. Oh, yeah. I mean, we, we seem to step up against the good teams. We just played the Braves pretty tough down in Atlanta. This was earlier in the, in the year. Started off by Niger Morgan. Triple to get us going in the first inning. And then it was a grand slam home run off of Johan Santana by Josh Willingham. A little bit of a uh, hiccup there. They had to go in and look at the replay. They come back out and they say, yep, that one went off the back wall. And so Johan Santana got to the showers a little bit early. So they can get to the best in the business. They need to go out there. And he has not pitched well in his last four starts, Bob. Shut out by his old ball club, the Minnesota Twins, last time out. He hasn't had much run support as well. Matt Caps, a bunch of saves against the Mets already this year. There's been some suspense. There's been some great defense behind him. But Caps keeps getting it done, and he's the main reason the Nats are 5-3 and three against their rivals from the National League East. And brought to you by AT&T. Rethink possible. And by Acura. Acura. Advance.
We've had a break in the weather since the Nats were in town several days ago. Beautiful evening here at the ballpark. Folks are coming down Half Street. First of July, a big holiday weekend coming up. And time for the Nationals to get things turned around. They're 11 games under 500. The Mets are 10 games over. And some game notes for you. Michael Morse has been outstanding in 11 starts this year. 353 and some home run and RBI totals as well. The Nats still continue to play very close ball games. Record's not the same as it was about two months ago. And David Wright, 7 of 10 with runners aboard last nine games when they can score, and he's been outstanding. David Wright has 63 RBIs and leads the National League. That's number three in all of baseball. April 11, Levon Hernandez just happened to be the Nats pitcher against the New York Mets at City Field, and he was pretty good. No nice. runs, five hits in seven innings. He was getting a lot of ground balls. He was getting a lot of swings and misses, and he was changing speeds beautifully. And so hopefully tonight, Levon go out, get ahead of these Mets hitters. This is not their A lineup. We've got a lot of guys that are not in there tonight. Barajas is out. Bay is out. Jose Reyes strained an oblique muscle in batting practice in Puerto Rico yesterday. So uh, go out there and challenge the guys you think you can get out and give your team a chance to win. The Mets arrived in town at 6 o'clock this morning. Got to their team hotel at 7 after their three-game series in Puerto Rico. They had a 90-minute rain delay last night. And then they had a ball game that lasted almost four hours. The Nats, most of them got to their places of residence at about... 2.30 to 3 o'clock this morning. So it was a short night for both ball clubs, and here's the Mets lineup. They're fourth in the league in hitting at 261, eighth in runs, and David Wright just having a great month of June. He's 10 for his last 17, six leading batting average in the league, fifth in on-base percentage. He's really getting it all done for the Mets right now, and he wasn't very good when the Nationals saw them back early in the season. He was leading the league in strikeouts. Levon Hernandez, 15 starts. Let's give you the PNC pitcher scouting report brought to you by PNC for the achiever in us all. He's glad to be home. He uh, does a great job here, and they have uh, lost their, his last five road starts, so he's very glad to be back here. Chain speeds, keep it low, and skeleton crew, as I said before, Reyes, Barajas, Bay. All out of the lineup tonight, so attack, attack, and attack that strike zone. There are some interesting names in the Mets lineup tonight. Here's the defense for the Nats. It's brought to you by Cisco Federal, a proud mission partner to the United States Department of Defense. Pretty much the same configuration except for right field where Michael Morris gets the start tonight. Ian Desmond after eh, what you would have to call two needed games off back in at short. And Will Nieves. Replaces Pudge Rodriguez. Pudge caught the entire Atlanta series. So Desmond has to stay under control and just pick up the ball and use that good arm of his to get it over to first base or in some cases second base. And the Nats have to play better defense. Well, I looked up the numbers today. 50 errors by our infield. Eight by both of our second basemen. 19 over there. Ryan Zimmerman has eight. Ryan and Adam Dunn only has four in the first base, so they've got to do a much better job. We have a team that pitches to contact. They have had over 3,000 total chances, so this defense has to pick it up, not just right now, but the rest of the season. The entire Mets team has made 13 fewer errors than the Nationals infield. That's how bad it's been. First pitch of the ball game is a strike, and we're underway at 7.09. The hitter is Jesus Feliciano. He's a 31-year-old rookie who's been in the minor leagues for 13 years. Look at those blue skies overhead. And two of those years with the Nationals. He was at Harrisburg in 05 and 06. That signed him as a minor league free agent a couple of years ago, and he's aboard. And there's some cheering out there. Always some Mets fans in the ballpark. When New York comes visiting, so Feliciano playing in his 15th game adds to his 262 batting average. Jim Reynolds has the plate tonight. Reynolds is an 11 year veteran. Crew chief Tim Welke, first base, Scott Berry, second, and Bill Welke at third.
Welke brothers have 37 years of experience between them umpiring at the major league level. Next up is another young player in Ruben Tejada. At least young in terms of major league experience. Tejada is only 20 years of age. And when the Mets had him on their opening day roster, he was the youngest player on their roster in nearly 40 years since a young infielder by the name of Tim Foley. Back in 1971. Well, we saw him when we were up in New York, and then he immediately got sent back to the minor leagues. And he's back up in the game. Hitting 269 in 21 games. I believe on this is outside. One ball, one strike. Kinetic here on the pitch count. Let's see how close that is to the edge. Because we know Levon needs the edges on both sides of the plate. That's a call he might get a little later. Blown away, two and one. And dodge a bullet tonight with Reyes out. 19 stolen bases, only caught twice. He has an oblique that's bothering him right now. And can't swing the bat. Jason Bay is also out of the lineup tonight. And Angel Pagan, who's played really well against the Nats this year. There's a punt. Levon bare hand, time to get him. Well played. And down to second base, Feliciano with one out. So a runner in, in scoring position for David Wright was driven in 63 on the year. Well, and you see the calmness of a Levon Hernandez. And maybe some uh, younger players on our ball club can learn a lot from Levon. Still going out in there and hustling and going at 150 miles an hour, but mentally being calm enough to be able to put yourself in proper position to make those plays. Breeze blowing in from left field. David Wright hitting 311. He's also in the top five in the league of hits with 89. And I know Levon is aware of this. The Nats need to be aware. First base open here early. Don't let David Wright hurt you badly on a pitch down the middle. Not with first when it base might be open. better to put him on. Exactly. I mean, Ike Davis is a good hitter, but he's still a young major leaguer, and he's next. And he and he's a rookie and hasn't seen a lot of guys like me. And as the count goes to two and zero, oh, you'd be surprised if Fernandez even threw a strike here. There's Ike Davis with nine home runs. Jeff Rancor to follow him. To the right side, some late movement on that pitch. Well, that's a nice job right there by Levon, getting David Wright 2 0 to go fishing on a bad pitch. That's exactly what he's trying to do. He's not going to throw him a strike. He's not going to give in. To be 3 2, he'll still throw a change up for a breaking ball. Last four games. Hit 404 in the month of June, 447 on base percentage. Six homers, 29 for him. And 32 hits. Heads up. You know, the thing you fear, and this is strictly on an individual basis, I'm talking about it. David Wright recovers and has a huge offensive season, and Ryan Zimmerman continues to struggle. They have the same number of errors, and a lot of time the guy gets the gold glove because he. Had a better season overall, not just fielding. Shouldn't be that way. But that's the way the voting goes. And David Wright has won a gold glove in the past. Zimmerman grabbed it last year. But right now, there are two guys from the Tidewater area offensively going in different directions. That's a fastball up and away, three and two. A lot of at bats. A hit every three times up for David Wright. I want to pitch around this time. Four homers, 10 driven in. 36 at bats. 
Runner looking in from second base, trying to get together with Wilmy Abus. Lead off man, Jesus Feliciano with a base hit. Still camped at second base. And on a pitch up, David Wright strikes out. The one chink in his armor this year have been the strikeouts. David Wright has fanned 91 times. Well, like you said, he is expanding his zone. He had a lot of hits in June. I mean, this is a sidearm curveball that actually goes uphill. He won't be happy when he goes back and sees that videotape because that was ball four. David Wright, Adam Dunn each coming into this game with 90 strikeouts. Justin up to 98. Mark Reynolds 108. And Lee Vaughn, well, you have to get him early, but nobody has. Here's Ike Davis, the young left handed batter. Off speed for ball one. Davis, just 23 years of age. Mets took him in the first round just two years ago. At 288 at Port St. Lucie last year, 309 at Double A Binghamton. And he made his debut in mid April this year with a single in his first at bat against the Cubs on April 19th. He pulls his string on a ball going away from him. Goes out there and he gets it. He's going to be off balance. Not a lot of power. Single's not going to kill you. So strange to me still to see Jeff Francoeur not in Atlanta but in New York. Two one from Levon, close to the corner, but called outside by Jim Reynolds. How often do we see the wind blowing in from left center field? Well, it's mostly in April because you know the weather's still cool, and that's the north. So the wind's coming right down from the north, right down Half Street. It's unusual, Rob, for this time of the year. Flags on top of the scoreboard are pretty straight out. Degrees at game time, it almost feels like an early May evening based on the weather we've had. Still some problems for Morse and right field. He's in the sun, everybody else in the shade. He doesn't get a mind drive. And about an hour and a half from night, it'll be twilight time. A lot of conditions this time of the year. That's a little fister into right center. And because the Mets were able to bump the runner over, they take the lead here in the first inning as Ike Davis drives in his 35th run. So Levon's first inning of near perfection comes to an end here. Well, he does come inside, but the ball kind of floats and fades over the center. Ike Davis still kind of gets jammed on it, just gets it over the infield. Big, strong young man. Fights it off. We'll bring in Jeff Francoeur. Last time the Nats saw the Mets, Jeff Francoeur was batting in the 240s. There's the big slur curveball that stays outside. Comes into this game at 265. And very good success against Levon Hernandez. <laughs> That's why Levon's going to say, You think you're getting a fastball when you're 7 for 16 against me? Well, as Bob just said, very good fastball hitter. So what do you do? You go really slow, 64 on another curveball. That one's 63.
say pulling the string on that pitch is that they get out front and they almost mimic pulling down a window shade. So it's getting good extension and follow through on those changes. Nibbling, wow. nibbling at the corners, not getting any calls right now. Well, he's not getting that corner. It's a nice 2 2 pitch. As long as it's not a strike for Santana, not a problem because it's consistent, but whew, just missed. Runner will be going. You don't have to throw Frank Cora strike to get him out sometimes. He is a free swinger. And he's late for a pitch out. Another Nationals pitcher having a very long first inning. J.D. Martin last night, 37 pitches in a one run first against Atlanta. And Levon Hernandez about to throw his 25th. A big slow curveball for a strikeout. Two K's in the inning on that pitch. The base hits by Feliciano and Davis, and the Mets have an early run. In the order tonight, knows Santana. In fact, they're former teammates from Minnesota. Chris John hitting a 295 overall and coming off a 232 last month. Michael Morris in the lineup. Desmond back in. Will Nieves in there tonight against Johan Santana. 127 career wins and a very good career earn run average of 3.14. I can tell you right now that Niger Morgan cannot bunt the ball toward David Wright. Well, you want to, if he does give you a change up and you're going to bunt, it'll come back into Niger. He can take the first base. And quickly 0 2 to Morgan, batting a 252. With a low on base percentage of 314. Niger is 8 for 24, though, in this last six games. So he's showing some signs of life starting Friday night in Baltimore. Not even close on a no two breaking ball. PNC Bank scouting report 17. That's how many runs Johan Santana, and that is not typical of him. He's given up in his last four starts. And along those lines, nine walks. September of last year, that's when he had bone chips removed from the elbow. Maybe that's getting to him a little bit. I doubt it. And then beware of that change of pace. It's one of the best in the big leagues, if not the best change up in the big leagues. Guzman goes up hacking. I have to change some stats to it. We're going to turn this thing around, Bob. The Mets are 36 and 13 when they score first. The Nationals are 9 and 24 when the opponent scores first. There's one interesting statistic between these two ball clubs that is dead even. And 
it surprises me a little bit. I thought the Mets would be much better. They have the exact same team on base percentage as the Nationals do, 325. But somehow Jerry Manuel's teams found a way to score 40 more runs. Guzman pops it up right out behind second. And there's Alex Cora. Very good defensive player. Cisco defense for the Mets. They're fourth in the league, as mentioned earlier. They've only made 37 errors total. 13 fewer than the Nationals infield. Jesus Feliciano, Chris Carter, Ruben Tejada, maybe the guys you don't know that much about. We're finding more out about Ike Davis all the time. He drove in that run, gave the Mets a lead. And David Wright is a past gold glove winner at third base. And here's the current reigning gold glove guy, Ryan Zimmerman. Ryan over 19 ball games, now hitting just 200. 2 for 12 with a couple of RBIs in the Atlanta series. Last time we saw Santana, I know if you were a viewer with us, he showed you his mechanics. He showed you the fastball and the changeup and the curveball all came from the same arm location. It's the right handed Zimmerman. He's working from the third base side of the pitching rubber. So as far as repeating deliveries, one of the best in the major leagues. Very reminiscent of Fernando Valenzuela as far as throwing the ball from the same arm slot, whether it was his change up for a ball or fastball. Bob said, be aiming from the middle of the plate in if he throws a breaking ball to try to get Zim. It's a pretty good fastball in there. It's a three and one. Well, if you're pitching, you want this pitch because you don't often want to come inside on a guy like Zimmerman. That pitch was very close to Zimmerman. Zimmerman rifles one to right center. He got great extension. And Ryan now starting to show some signs of life. Remember how hard he hit his single before scoring in the sixth inning last night in Atlanta. And when you see Ryan go into right center, that's a real good sign. It is a really good sign, and that's what happens when Santana didn't get the inside fastball. He had to move it back over the plate, and that's when Zim Zimmerman rifles it into right field. So, not that you can blame the umpire, but you can also thank the umpire for making the opponent have to throw it over the plate. I don't want to live there. Here's Adam Dunn, who needs one more extra base hit to set a personal record. That ball not carrying too far in right field, and it's run down by Jeff Rancourt. He's at a career high 42 extra base hits before the All Star break.
guys in this league reside. Adam needs one more extra base hit to set a new pre All Star break career high. So he's having a really good first half. He would be most deserving to go to Anaheim. I was just thinking the same thing. I know you and I get asked that a lot. Well, the first thing we get asked, what's up with Adam Dunn in the contract? And it's a shame that that has to be talked about in the middle of the season. But it's not going to go away, at least until one month from today, which is August 1st, with Adam Dunn still in the national uniform. And we all hope he is. This is Chris Carter. There's a lot of things they can do. As Levon strikes out Chris. That was Chris Carter. Carter. And uh, they can offer him arbitration, which would be a one year deal for him. They could also give him an extension. They could trade him, try to get in some uh, maybe some pitching help, or whatever kind of help to try to even bolster your minor league system. But, you know, you and I, we both feel, and this is just our opinion, that he is a weapon in our lineup. And you don't want to you don't want to lose him if you don't have to. Well, I was asked this question on the radio this morning. Where are you going to find a Another presence like, like this him. in between Zimmerman and Josh Willingham? You know, he's an on base guy. He's got a great eye at the plate. He protects the guys in front of him. Zim, Guzman, Niger, and then Willingham and everybody behind him get better pitches. As a hanging pitch, and Henry Blanco takes it into left field. Bottom line is, as a former pitcher, when you're, you know a guy like Adam Dunn can beat you with one swing in the bat. You have to pitch around him, and you have to attack the guys that are in front of him and behind him. And if there's a base open, you put him on, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, not many guys with that kind of status like an Adam Dunn. Top five in home runs, top 20 in RBI. Uh, he's only made four errors at first base this season, and hitting nearly 30 points above his career average. Here's the number eight man, Alex Cora. Well, we didn't even talk about the clubhouse in Tangent. He's one of the most well liked players around the major leagues. He is a huge, gregarious guy, always fun loving, always even killed. He could be going as good as anybody or as bad as anybody. You would not know it with Adam. He doesn't bring that to the field. Well, it's just like the little exchange we had. Remember those good plays he made in Atlanta after the game Tuesday night? Mm -hmm. I saw him at his locker. I said, hey, big guy, nice glove work tonight. He goes, yeah, it's what's keeping me in the big leagues. <laughs> That's Adam Dunn. And we all know it's his bat first and foremost. Two and one. But his self-deprecating humor and his influence on the other guys in the clubhouse hard to measure. Well, and I know I said this, but I'll say it for the new viewers that have not heard me say this, that uh, when we went and visited the soldiers, the wounded warriors over at Bethesda, and uh, actually it was Walter Reed. Line drives from the Mets here, four of them. Josh Willingham and I were here with Bethesda, but uh, he told his teammates, you guys are going, and over 20 players on a day of a game, coaching staff, trainers, all went over to visit the uh, men and women that matter most in this country right now, our military, our fighting force that keep us free and safe. So when he speaks, a lot of guys listen. It's well respected, not just in this clubhouse, all around baseball. There's Johan Santana with two men support, one out. He's had three sacrifice bunts this year, four for 28 overall. He should be bunting. Close play at second. Desmond slipped in behind Henry Blanco, the catcher, and Levon put that throw right near the bag. Well, and that's the thing, like I said before, he's always calm. He's worried about the hitter right here. The hitter's trying to sacrifice, but he's also, there's a play on. Okay, I'll calmly spin around, make a nice sharp throw. So there's so many parts to his game that maybe go unnoticed. We get to see it every five days, so we don't not notice it. At that time, Desmond was moving to the bag. You don't want to do that. And Levon delivered the pitch, and then as soon as the pitch was fouled off, Levon turned around and glared out towards second base. So something was not right there. Well, a lot of times it's a look or it's a tug on your pants that, okay, let's make the move and let's try to put a play on. That didn't happen, and so Levon went home while Desmond's going to second. You don't want to do that. Santana pushes the ball. Zimmerman on the call. The run, the throw, the out, two down. 
Blanco over to third. Cora to second. Now the Mets, two for two in bunt situations here. Well, and this is beautifully done. This puts your team in a position to get an extra run right here, even though it makes the second out of the inning. So it's a tough play down. Zim has to make a great play on it. Anything can happen when you make the defense make plays like that. He could have thrown it down the right field line. Two run score. But if you can handle the bat, do fundamentals, execute, you help your ball club. Jesus Feliciano singled up the middle his first time up. So my coaches every spring shouted at us for two straight weeks as they did bumping over and over and over. I'm not sure I would want to see the national success rate bunting this year. Whether it be pitchers or the other guys. That ball into left center. It's coming right back to Josh Willingham. And out of the inning is Levon Hernandez. The hammer coming up. Michael Morrison, Desmond behind it. twice he gave it to his mom I had to argue with her to let me quit college to sign pro to play professional baseball I mean she wasn't very happy about that but when I uh, when I did give the ring I, I was trying to ensure her that she didn't make a bad decision he told me too that he's more of a student right now he loves to learn he often visits libraries and museums he saw a Picasso exhibit in Philadelphia and he really loves to read he's read two he's authored two books he even uh, helped build a library on an Indian reservation back in Arizona a lot more on Miguel Batista as the game continues Bob a longtime major league pitcher a gentleman and a true renaissance man Miguel Batista 39 years young from Santo Domingo. On an 0 1 pitch, Santana throws that patented changeup to Josh Willingham, who likes to swing hard and hit the ball a long way. This year, when he does, the Nats are 12 and 2 when Willingham hits a home run. He hit a grand slam off Santana this year, and that's well off the plate inside. In fact, in the odd stat department, Santana's given up three grand slams this year. Well, and you saw that last pitch. He backs it up, and we often talk about, well, how do you change up? What are you changing up off of? A very good fastball that he can spot. So then he throws a backdoor breaking ball, so he's thrown all three of his pitches. Change up, comes back with a 90 mile an hour fastball in, then goes backdoor on the breaking ball. So he's one of the masters, one of the best pitchers in the big leagues. It's not just about why he's paid so much money. He knows how to pitch. Willingham reaching can't get to it. He has struck out the leadoff man each of the first two innings. Morgan in the first. Willingham here. Morrison Desmond coming up. 
Well, as he pitched all over the strike zone right here, then he's way ahead in the count, gets the change up in there, backdoor breaking ball, and then he throws another change up to put Josh Willingham away. The only time he threw a fastball was a show me fastball in the inner half. Michael Morse gets jammed. Michael had one at bat in the Atlanta series and he didn't do a double play last night. So it seems like he's the one now not getting any ABs. He's hitting 353 in his last 11 starts and 333 overall. Gets under that one and pops it up near the right field line. Long runs for everybody involved. And another good grab going to the line and over the line by Jeff Francoeur. Well, if that was a punt in football, it would have had about a five second hang time. It seemed to hang up forever. Well, Francoeur played a lot of football, so he got under it. Oh. He had a lot of time. He was playing in the pole, so he had to run, I don't know, what do you think, about 75 yards? 50 yards. Let's see where he sets up for another right handed batter. But he had to go close to 50 yards for that. Ian Desmond. A June to forget. Batting 222, a slew of errors. And he goes to center field. He will be two for his last 26. Bats go quickly and quietly in the second inning against Johan Santana, who has a 1 0 lead. For the Nets. It's the top of the third, and Levon Hernandez gets a strike call on his 40th pitch of the night. It's to Ruben Tejada, who bunted Feliciano to second base back in the first inning, and then with two outs, Ike Davis drove him in. Ruben Tejada is from Panama, signed at the age of 16 just four years ago. He slaps it to right center. That's where the Nats have him played. And Niger Morgan right there to grab it. Well, tonight and then tomorrow and Saturday, every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, Miller Light Party Night out there at the Red Loft in the Red Porch area. Get a scoreboard pavilion seat and a drink voucher for 20 bucks, 22 for prime games. 
Make sure to come early for the pregame happy hour at the Miller Lite Scoreboard Walk Bar featuring $5 beers. Find out about it at nationals.com. David Wright struck out swinging first time up. That ball is hit hard. It turns Morgan around one way than the other. He recovers in time to make a basket catch. Unusual route to the ball, and Niger able to put it away. Well, this is just a tremendous athletic play right here by Niger Morgan. He turns the wrong way, but he still hustles and he goes out and he knows if I can get to a spot, I can make that catch. So right there, he turns around, picks up the ball, actually overran it. So it's a great athletic play by Niger Morgan that saves at least a double. And when he turned around the other way, he was looking a little bit into the sun. Well, so he had some elements to deal with there as well. What was done wonderfully is he didn't panic. He knew, okay, I've got a shot because I still see the ball, and then he's got to turn around and lose the ball for a second, then reacquire it. And he did that and made the catch. He was a human homing torpedo on that play. He was. And he got it done. Well done. Here's Ike Davis, who had the RBI hit first time. 1-1 count from Levo. There's that swing back fastball. I noticed on the first pitch of the inning to Tejada, a fastball outer part of the plate. He got the call from Jim Reynolds, maybe for the first time this So both guys evening. need that portion of the plate. they got to have that outer black portion of the plate. Target away. And some sneaky fast on that ball. 86. Thereabouts, and here's Jeff Francoeur, who's next. Maybe this inning, maybe not. And him reaching, good pitch. Guzman on the charge, and Levon Hernandez gets the quick inning. His first one, two, three. He gave us Levon and Morgan coming up. Tough is you're trying to pick the ball up, trying to pick the ball up. The ball came comes out of that same arm slot, and it can have 10 mile an hour slower on it, or it can have that 91 on it. And there's the fastball. And there are a lot of guys who throw harder than Johan Santos. Oh, absolutely. But but hitting is all about trying to find the baseball as quickly as possible, picking the, picking it up when he's making that move coming from behind his back. Got the takeaway, you come out of your glove, you do that little circle action behind your back, then you come over the top. The hitter the whole time is trying to pick it up. But now if he's trying to pick up not only the 
baseball, but the speed of the baseball, it makes him dub doubly tough. 1 1 to Will Nieves. Looked like the changeup low and inside. Will hitting a buck 75 now. A homer, eight RBIs. Not many at bats lately with Pudge Rodriguez back from the DL for three weeks. And what what Adralis, uh, Chapman is doing in the minor leagues too is he's trying to throw his pitches from the same arm slot because the hitters can pick up on a guy he throws his curveball from a different location his hundred mile an hour fastball from a different location well he's going to get eaten up at the major league level so they're down in the minor leagues right now with the Reds trying to work on their thirty million dollar dollar kid so that he throws everything like Johan Santana from the same arm slot. They didn't know that before they gave him all that money. It's not. Will Nieves, a guy you don't want to walk, and that's what Santana did. So Levon Hernandez will have a chance to bunt him along. Well, we talked about nine walks in his last four starts, Bob. 17 home runs given up. A tough goal of it. Nieves says to Ike Davis, I can't believe you guys walked me. <laughs> Ready to hack. Will's going. Maybe they just thought you were lonely. Now, Levon has six sacrifice bunts this year and 105 in his career. That's out in front of the plate, and it'll work. Looked like Blanco had a thought about going to second. The sacrifice goes 2 3, and we've seen some good small ball by both clubs in this game. Johan Santana just throwing it over there, trying to take you out. Great little sacrifice bunt. See him deaden it. He hopes it stays fair. Blanco thinks about second, takes the easy out to first. There you see it. Nice form. Deadens the ball. Blanco with the flamethrower right arm easily makes the throw first. Same pitch Niger missed for strike three in the first inning. He has struck out 52 times. Tomorrow is the halfway point of the season. So your leadoff guy is on a pace to strike out over 100 times. And another count of 0 2. Well, we're not trying to be overly critical of Niger, but say this was the NFL and one of your wide receivers had a rate of dropping footballs. And every time he dropped a football, you're saying, well, he's not supposed to do that. It's the same thing with Niger. You know, you need him to get on base because he's most effective when he's driving pitchers crazy. He helps the rest of our lineup. Yeah, in football, you might take that guy and make him a blocker and quit throwing to him. Yeah, that was Terrell Owens one year. You know, he's supposed to be such a fabulous wide receiver, and he had the most drops in the NFL that year. 0-2 pitch. This looks like it's a strike. Mm. But didn't get the call from Reynolds. Be hacking if this one's close. On the front door, Morgan is struck out looking. Right, good change up. Lefty change up. Knights are not showing up Reynolds, so he stays in the game. UPS store here on the pitch track. It just looks like a good changeup. Like I said, two strikes close enough. Got to be hacking. UPS store does a lot more than shipping, like offering moving boxes and supplies. It'll be up to Guzman now with two outs. Against a pitcher he knows very well. Well, and the reason people may think at home, well, why was he frozen? Because you don't normally throw lefty to lefty changeup because that changeup will come back into the good part of the hitting zone for a left handed hitter. Nigel is looking breaking ball and fastball away. He gets the changeup in and the freeze. Guzman, 450 career against Santana, even though he popped up here tonight.
Bottom of the third, the Mets on top, one nothing. I remember another great Met changeup artist was Frank Viola. And I know some of my managers in Cincinnati would stop, stack the lineup with lefties to try to take away that uh, that changeup. Same thing with Tom Glavin. Guzman in the center field hits it pretty well. Drifting for it, Feliciano. And the Nats are gone. Lead off walk, nothing comes of it. And on to the middle innings. Mets on top. First of July, this town will be alive this weekend. If you're not going to be watching fireworks, stay away from the GW Parkway on Sunday evening. It'll be tough to get up and down that road. It'll be packed on the west side of the Potomac. Here's Jeff Francoeur. Strasburg Saturday, fireworks Sunday. And the Mets in town. We we're talking today about the less than desirable baseball and broadcast conditions down in Puerto Rico. It's been a number of years since the Expos played some games down there. Guzman takes care of Jeff Francoeur in the fourth inning is under. Leave on here at home. About to get a visit from the umpire. That's outstanding company. We just saw Tim Hudson, Josh Johnson, and Adam Wainwright have been outstanding this year. And Mike Pelfrey leading the way for the Mets right now with his 198 at home, 293 overall. And Mike Pelfrey is 10 and 2 this year. He's going to the All Star game this year. He should. The Nationals will not see him in this series. Mets, by the way, have the fifth best ERA in the league at 3.83 as a staff. The changeup by Levon. By the way, we'll let you know when he doesn't throw something off speed. How's that? <laughs> 0 2 to Chris Carter, who was called out on strike. Boy, Jerry Manuel's team really a dramatic turnaround. They were after his head about a month and a half ago, and now he's got the Mets 10 games over 500. If they win tonight, there'll be a game back at the Idle Braves who open up a series at home tomorrow against the Marlins. And by the way, the Mets had the best National League record in interleague play, 13 and 5. The exact opposite of the Nats, 5 and 13. Scoreboard clock says it's 8 p.m. right here at Nationals Park on South Capitol Street. Beautiful evening. 
80 degrees of game time. Bob, Rob, Debbie, glad to be back with our wonderful mass and crew here at home. Right field, well hit. Michael Morris covers it. Levon Hernandez now seven in a row. Come on out Sunday. Family fun pack ticket includes a seat, hot dog, chips, and a soda. Starting at just $14, you can stop by nationals.com slash kids to purchase your family fun pack tickets. 135 Sunday. Nets. Mets. This is Henry Blanco who singled the left first time up. So many things that Levon throws barely come across the plate, whether it's late or whether it's sliding or going down. Not only too much of the plate, but not enough to be a home run. Well, the Nets have been tormented by Mets catchers this year. That's his second hit of the game. Yeah, he's he's getting the singles, and when Rod Barajas plays, he hits home runs. Well, and, and against Levon and, and Henry's faced him many, many times, so he knows, okay, I'm not going to get a pitch that I can really square up. So the best I might do is get something I can just smack up the middle or the other way. So he takes his uh, he takes two hits already. Take him and run with him. Alex Cora also has a base hit. We mentioned that the Marlins and Braves don't play tonight. Phillies are playing. They're at Pittsburgh. Gave up a run in the bottom of the second. And then Wilson Valdez hit a home run for the Phillies in the third. One one. Cole Hamels. Pitching for Philadelphia tonight. Phillies in the East are three and a half back of Atlanta, two behind the Mets. Marlins are eight and a half back, the Nats 12. Coach Razor shines with Henry Blanco. Adam Dunn holding him with two outs. Left handed batter in there. Cora likes to move the ball around the field. Had a left field idea, but Levon just buried that one out. Henry Blanco does have a stolen base, so Razor shines. UPS store here on the break and pitch. Nice change up, down and away. Actually, that was a sinking fastball. Then he goes upstairs, bringing the heat, and Alex Cora's got a happy man. Ivan Hernandez, four strikeouts tonight and four good innings.
the team would be Johan Santana and this changeup. So it's not like they're facing a lot of slouches lately. They're facing some aces and some very, very talented guys. Uh, so it's just been a kind of a wrecking crew as far as pitchers against the Nationals lately. As you said, they don't face Palfrey, so that's kind of a, okay. Well, thank, thank you very much. But and then before that, when the Nats went to Baltimore and put some runs on the board, they had 14 runs worth of leads up there and couldn't hold any of them. That was very frustrating. Putting it all together, there's got to be a formula for that around here somewhere. Zimmerman, a hard single to right center, his first time. And Santana goes low and inside on an 0 2 pitch. Well, and, it, and if you wonder if defense hurts other teams in other sports, I looked up in the NFL the worst two teams were the Detroit Lions and the St. Louis Rams. Both the two worst defensive teams in the NFL. Two hopper out to Ruben Tejada. The Lions went 1 and 15, the Rams went 2 and 14. So it does. It correlates to all sports. Geico President's Race. Anything funny happened tonight? And they're really motoring this evening. Teddy, obviously, no chance. Head to head, George and Tom. Thomas Jefferson. Look like tall Tom. How do you pick between those two residences, Monticello and Mount Vernon? Ooh. Way ahead of Abe's log cabins. Out of play, left side off the bat of Adam Dunn, who swung at the first pitch, his first time in line to actually flight out to right. You know, Adam's 31 years of age. I love what he said last week. He said, "Hey, I'm not ready to go." To the American League and be a DH. I got too many years left in this game. He wants to be a ball player. You know, there may come a time in his career when that serves him well and serves whatever team he's with well. Oh, and he's not ready for that. I played with Frank Thomas. Frank was not the uh, the greatest first baseman ever. Wasn't the worst either. But he did not want to DH. Way outside the breaking ball, and Adam Dunn. Is Santana's fourth strikeout victim? Santana 4Ks, Lebon 4Ks, Willingham coming up, and so is Trivia from AT&T. Five current players of the Nats have won a World Series championship. I can get them all. Well, Batista, Kennedy, Rodriguez, three of them. Levon. Levon four. Well, Bruni was one. Did I say? Did I say Kennedy? You said Kennedy. Kennedy was uh, MVP of the ALCS. Willie Harris. And Willie Harris is the other. 05 White Sox. Did they not deliver Mets media guides to the truck? <laughs> <laughs> they uh, felt sorry they for did, us and gave it us an easy one, us. Rob. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, guys. Thank you. We feel like knowledgeable baseball guys again. <laughs> one and one to Willingham. Well, we'd like about 20 other guys to experience that. Yeah, Willie Harris is one that folks might have missed. White Sox. Gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Three and one. Company, but that place was rocking in Houston. They just went down there. Yeah, that couple with 04 the year before, Red Sox, White Sox, didn't lose a World Series game in those two years. There's a hammer shot to left center. Cut off by Chris Carter, and Josh Willingham has the national second base hit. The other one, Zimmerman's hard single in the first. And that'll bring up Michael Morris with the runner aboard and two outs here in the fourth. Well, uh, this is just a line shot that is too much of the inner half. Josh Willingham can easily cover the inner half with his quick hands. Carter 
Kruger gets the ball in quickly. I've never seen a guy get a base hit and then go to first base and not say a word. They get real chatty after a good swing, don't they? They're happy. That's, that's a happy moment. A lot of failure in baseball. Michael Morris fouled out to Frank Cora first time. That towering fly ball that Jeff ran down in foul territory. Back in the second inning. One final today, by the way. The Reds won their ball game. They won at Chicago 3 2. And the Chicago Cubs are now 10 and a half games out of first place. There's a lot of people calling in the radio show this morning. My partner in radio is uh, out of Chicago, Jim Memo, the Supreme Post game for the Cubs. He said Bobby Valentine's name is now cropping up Where as a pop possible replacement for Luke Canella. Where does it pop up? Michael Moore, that ball spinning back fair. That's it for the Nats in the fourth. Two hard hit balls against Santana. That's been it in four innings. One nothing Mets. Bucky Harris made an error to ruin the big train's perfect game, but his base hit later drove in the game's only run. Strange thing about it, the next day the big train got a sore arm and didn't do much the rest of the year, finishing 8 and 10. And uh, we had a 149 pitch no hitter in baseball last week, Rob. Those, yes, he did. those no hit games can take a toll. Well, eight walks. Get your pitch count up there. Edward Jackson was then. Passed over at least for a couple of days his next time around. Levon to Johan, top of the fifth here. Santana really hits it hard, but way foul. Mm -hmm. Counts one and two. Didn't I see somewhere that that was the most pitches ever in a no hitter? I do believe that is correct. Now, but you and I both speculated that Nolan Ryan, who threw seven, <laughs> possibly could have thrown more than 149 in one of those seven no hitters. I know in some of his games he did. Oh yeah. But maybe in his no hitters he didn't get that high. You know, Nolan Ryan. I mean, he after was you've known for going 180, 200 pitches. But after you've seen him one or two times, aren't you swinging early in the count? Yeah. He so in some of those no hitters, he probably got some quick outs as the game went on. I don't want him getting two strikes. Well, that's what a lot of people are saying about Steven Strasburg that you don't want to get to his change up for that breaking ball. Funny thing about Strasburg, I've noticed some guys don't want him to get one strike on. Him. I've seen guys swinging on two and zero oh and making outs. Little chopper by Santana. A couple of finals in the American League earlier today: Cleveland and home beat Toronto six one, and the Yankees back in the win column. They're 48-30. They beat Seattle four two. 
the stat. Eight of the last 12 ball games have been decided by one run by the Nationals. Santana's bat goes flying and he strikes out. Levon's fifth strikeout victim. Here's our trivia answer. And we think we got all five. Adding some pedigree and some success to this team this year. The guys who've been on world championship teams, Levon, Miguel, Adam Kennedy, Willie Harris, and Fudge Rodriguez. Well, we're, we're kind of like the guy up here who makes all the routine plays. Give us one like that, we won't miss it. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of pressure. Here's Jesus Feliciano, one for two with the base hit, and the game's only a run. Levon misses up high. We're after those 319 lands. It's humid as it was. This is gorgeous. Oh my gosh. This feels like the first of May, not July. Laced in the right center. Morris will have to do well to get over there and cut it off, and he does. A one out hit, and Jesus Feliciano, career minor leaguer, who, as I told you earlier, was in the Nationals organization for two years. 31 years of age and just now making it to the big leagues. The Dodgers drafted him in the 36th round 13 years ago. Here you see, for a second and third time through the order, Feliciano, as Bob said, very, very persistent lifer in baseball, making the most of his opportunity here. Ruben Tejada lined out hard to Niger Morgan last time. Up. Right before that scorcher, David Wright hit, and Niger gathered in as well. Leave on 162 career wins, 35 more than Johan Santana. He had a couple of years head start. 12 and 13 makes his 35th career start against the Mets. And of course, also pitched for the Mets. 23 starts last year, going 7 and 8. Levon's entire career, he's only been in the American League for 23 games. That was with Minnesota two years ago. Line drive, Desmond has it. And the base runner, Feliciano, good job of staying home. No chance for a double play throw. He's still at first base, two outs, and David Wright coming. There you see the pitch count 75 here, almost through five innings. David Wright struck out the first before hitting that laser back in the third. And you just see the great extension on that last pitch where it gets way out over that front foot. Great follow through. Ball goes up, ball comes down. Can't pull the trigger on it for David Wright. He's already struck out on one of those, almost a little bit lower on the arm angle. And he bounces this one up the middle with a defensive swing. Guzman to Desmond. Time to pull out the soprano sax. We're covering the bases with Miguel Batista tonight. And uh, we'll enjoy a few.
each other. So that's mostly what we do. It's great, Bob. I love watching Miguel take his sacks on the plane. I've actually seen him a couple of times in ballparks just outside the clubhouse, hidden away, practicing. And uh, it's been a lot of fun for him. Maybe he should do the national anthem some night. Get dribbles, uh, dibbles drum set out there. <laughs> yeah, give, him, give him a little rhythm with that thing. Get you out there. That ball well hit by Desmond. See you later. My bad. The ball is still in play. Right in the corner at the top of the wall. It actually ricocheted off of one wall and hit the other. We might have to check that. And I think there may be a dispute as whether this ball was out of the ballpark or not. Some fans are acting out there like it is a homer. This ball's crushed. The ball not carrying tonight. No, that hit the top of the fence. That's top pretty indisputable the right yeah. there. It's just that wall there is at a funny angle right there. It actually faces away from home plate. Great camera work. And it ricocheted to the side. Now, the umpires, Rob, do not have to go see no, they this. If they feel definitely it was not a home run. And they're approaching the manager, not the third base side. Well, now they're going to make a right turn and go. They're going to go look at it. But I, I don't think they're going to have to look at it very often. No. Very long. That's the best swing Ian Desmond has taken in quite a while. Well, and maybe he was able to clear his head a couple days off. Clearly. Nice. Often does that, but clearly it just hits the top of the wall right there on the cushiony part of the batting. One foot to the left, it's in the bullpen. Two inches higher, it hits the top of the wall and goes out. But the bottom line is a great swing by Desmond. And the Nationals will have a runner at second base, leading off the fifth inning. We don't think the umpires will be gone very long on this one. Here they come quickly. Somebody's about to put up two fingers for a double. Or the safe sign for a double. So Ian Desmond, 13th double of the year, his 20th extra base hit. Now you have the number eight, nine hitters, Davis and Levon coming up. Right there. That's maybe the quirkiest thing about the ballpark. That little area right there where the wall faces the left field corner. Will Nieves should be bunting right here, but he has to do the job and get Desmond over to third. Great job by Santana so far, pitch count wise, 52 pitches. You know, our, our stage manager, Joe Delpo, just handed me a very interesting note. What if it hits that? Hits the ricochets to the left, hits the top of the wall, and goes in the bullpen. It's a home run. That's a home run. That's a home run. Because the ball never hit the ground. Exactly. If it hits the wall and bounces out of play, it's a home yeah. run. Not wall. In now, there, there. But that's an interesting yeah. question, and that could happen someday. Well, just like it hit Jose Canseco in the head, or it hits a lot of guys in the glove and goes over the wall. As long as it doesn't hit the ground, it's in play. Willie Avis will move the runner. Great job. That ball right inside the bat. Saw it off. Big time. Now the Nats for Saturday's game against the Mets, Steven Strasburg pitching. They've released some individual seats in suites for Saturday. Tickets start at $95 per seat. There's a two-seat minimum per purchase. And you can do it three ways. Here at the box office at the ballpark. You call 888-632-NATS or go to nationals.com slash tickets. Get your sweet tickets while they last. They have been released for Saturday's game. Which starts, by the way, at 410. Fox will have the telecast. And Levon Hernandez with the infield in now. Looking for his first RBI of the year in the 76th of his career.
you'll have to do well to make contact here. That got some people on the move. Obviously not a suicide attempt. Desmond was not breaking with the pitch. <laughs> Looking for home run number 10. Target in her half. Santana missed his spot. And then Levon couldn't come close to making contact. One nothing ball game. And Levon Hernandez on pitches up, up, up. He's gone. Two outs. Major Morgan, two strikeouts today. Yeah, there have been guys who will bunt for a hit with two outs. A lot of guys I face. Really, really good bun bunters, especially like say Brett Butler, who bunt with two strikes all the time. Morgan to left. Chris Carter right there. And the Nationals after a runner at second base, nobody out, unable to score. One nothing still. Pitch by Dunn. So it is just a nice old fashioned pitcher's duel, Bob. 78 pitches, 50 strikes for Levon through five. Santana, 60 pitches through five, 38 strikes. And the hitter is Ike Davis, who's driven in the game's only run. Levon jammed him, and he was able to flare one over Guzman's head into right field back in the first.
that little backdoor breaking ball. Perfect. Kinetic right here on the pitch track. And you see it come back into the strike zone. Yvonne liked it, but Jim Reynolds didn't. Kinetic North America, by the way, provides world class technology to our national and homeland security customers. See this one? Just a bit outside. Target in. That usually means swing back fastball. This one means great play by Guzman. He made a couple of plays in Atlanta last night going to his left. And Christian Guzman takes a hit away from Mike Davis. Well, he made some fantastic plays down in Atlanta, and this just continues what he's been doing lately. Gets a great jump on it, dives, perfect timing, gets up, strong throw. Got to catch it first. Great catch. Get off your legs as quick as you can. Get up, find the six foot six giant over there. Nice play. Outside the Frank Corp. For two strikeout, ground ball to second. Desmond gets behind that one. There's that great arm, two outs. Mets have six hits, the Nats have three. Two of them from Jesus Feliciano. Mike Davis, the RBI single we talked about. Henry Blanco is two for two. He'll be on deck here when Carter comes up. Not much else offensively for either ball club tonight. The Nats have the game's only extra base hit. Desmond's near home run last inning. And it was probably the breeze that we talked about a couple of innings ago, Rob, that kept Desmond's ball in the ballpark. Unusual breeze from the north on this July evening. And Desmond hit it right into that wind. The top of the bullpen wall. Chris Carter over two. Right off the end of the bat. The Phillies are trailing at Pittsburgh now, three to one. Ball game, top of the fifth inning. Ball inside the division. The Mets are 16 and 16. The Nationals 13 and 13. The Nationals are only three games under 500 against the National League. They were 500 against the Central, seven and ten against the West, but that five and 13. And the Mets, of course, they took off. 13 and 5 in the league. They gained eight games on the 500 mark, and they're 10 over right now. Red Sox, White Sox, Rangers. I remember a couple of years ago talking to Charlie Manuel about that. The Phillies did end up winning the division, but interleague play almost cost them first place that year. He, he clearly said in July, if we don't win this thing, it's because of our record against the American League. Two balls and two strikes to Chris Carter. He'll just reach out and bump it into left field. Willingham can't get to it. 
Desmond is out there to help out with a heads up play. By Ian. And he keeps Carter to a single with his hustle. This is all about hustle. You go over, you try to make the play till you're called off. Willingham coming in. They both make a great effort, and then when Willingham misses it, Desmond's right there to back him up and get the ball in quickly. And the gun comes in for pinch run. And he has very good speed, obviously. He has stolen 14 bases in 19 attempts this year. Up the middle. Desmond to his left to Guzman. The Nats have a good inning defensively by the middle infielders. Guzman, Zimmerman, Dunn coming up. Stays in the ball game and plays center field. And that will move Jesus Feliciano over to left. Guzman Zimmerman Dunn. Nationals waiting and waiting and waiting for offense. There's a good start. That's the hardest Christian Guzman's hit a ball in a while. Well, from the right side, he's been crushing for the last couple of months. It's the left side that he's been having a little trouble. In around 350 from the right side, his natural side. That pitch on the inner half, and he just jumps all over it. The gone just in the game, but I think Jerry Manuel. Treated this as a day game after night game since they got into Puerto Rico at 6 a.m. That's why he gave a lot of guys the day off. The Nats get ahead. We could see Jason Bay as a pinch hitter before this game's over. Really, but I think it's difficult. You, you know, you send teams to China in spring training. Uh, you send teams in the middle of the season over to Puerto Rico. Why would they send them there without a day off I coming back? I don't understand it. I guess because they can't. For the Marlins and the Mets, and I think the Marlins are off today. They are. You know, that's it's not an easy thing to do. Now they probably sent Santana here a day early, but still, you know, these guys are fighting for playoffs, and a chance to go to the playoffs right before the All Star break, and you're going to wear them out a little bit.
short lead by Guzman. It's a change up way up and away two and one to Ryan. Zimmerman one for two tonight. And I think some folks in baseball Rob hold their breath in a situation like that because we were told the the lighting was not that great down there in the field. Well, that's the thing. Though, the, the field conditions are critical. Not a major league facility where they played the last three days. He rocks one into right center and very unlucky as it tails right back to Jeff Francoeur. But more importantly, Zim is hitting the ball on the screws in this ball game. And that is the best thing that I've seen in a long time. Need to get Zimmerman going. Here's the Nationals box score. Nobody has more than a hit. Ian Desmond has the only extra base hit. The Nats have stranded four. Santana's given one walk. Will Nieves leading off back in the third. They've only had two runners in scoring position. And here's Adam Dunn with a fly ball and a strikeout. That's ball just missing away. David Wright's out of the shortstop position. On pitches over the plate or near the plate, Santana really hasn't give Adam, given Adam Dunn any kind of velocity. Everything's been soft. Nothing Mets, bottom six. Santana came into this inning with only sixty pitches in five innings. is one stopped by Blanco. Now there's a runner at first with good speed. Santana's forte is the off speed pitch. Does Jim Riggleman start the runner here? Well, I, I think if uh, Christian can get a good jump off Santana, you start him. But you have to do something to try to jump start the offense against him. It's not going to be easy. The way he's been throwing the ball tonight to scratch out a run or two. Guzman short lead not going anywhere. Now done. Great take. Lays off the pitch on which he struck out last time up. The breaking ball away. Well, and that's what we talked about. You know, guys like Adam Dunn <laughs> that have that kind of eye and can also launch a ball 450 feet. Not many around. Right no, there's not many around. Here's Josh Willingham, base hit last time to left center. Josh hitting 275 now. And Santana drops one in there. This is the first time the Nats have had two base runners in the same inning. The clutch home run guys, Justin Upton, and then comes Dunn with Willingham. We know what kind of season Scott Rowland's had. And 
He can go with the gas when he needs to. Trying to get three for the price of one right there. <laughs> that swing. It's time to cut down right here with two strikes and put the ball in play. Josh Willingham gone on a fastball. 90 or so right at the knees, and that's the second out of the inning. Strikeout number six by Santana. Well, Santana, UPS still here on the fish track. Great off speed breaking ball, then gasoline on the outer half, gasoline on the inside, and he freezes Josh without throwing a changeup. It'll be up to Michael Morse with two down. By the way, Arizona is the only team the Nationals haven't seen in the National League this year. They play them home and home in August. Hits one to center. Well hit, but not enough. Chased down by Pagan. And the Nats frustrated again with no runs after six. Later tonight. Alex Cora is one for two. Santana, 0 for one with a sacrifice, follows him. And Levon continues to shrink that ERA here at Nationals Park. Great night right there for Devon. Wonderful night to be on his game. A couple of times he was on his game. He has an unfortunate uh, luck of facing Ubaldo Jimenez, who was on his game early in the year. Yeah, whole man hole. Right down the middle. Cora can only walk away. And Levon Hernandez, six strikeouts tonight. Holiday weekend here at the ballpark celebrates Saturday when Strasburg takes on the Mets 4 10 first pitch. First 20,000 fans 
Receive the free replica patriotic cap presented by Mass and HD. Show your red, white, and blue and your curly W this weekend. Is a new season high in strikeouts for Levon Hernandez. He had five on two different occasions. Too about Santana's surgery to remove the bone chips. I've had a similar surgery, and I, mine was a little bit more extensive, where they moved my ulnar nerve to the other side of my elbow. But you know, he's that he came back within a year, putting a lot of pressure on. It. He's an extreme maximum effort guy, and uh, maybe it bothered him for the last four starts. Tonight he's on top of his game, but you know, anytime you have any kind of uh, surgery or any time you have a procedure. Never know how your body's going to react. Could be next week, could be a month before. We didn't know about it. We got some good stuff tonight. Two Nationals fireballers have struck out seven batters this week <laughs> <laughs> Steven Strasburg and Ivan Hernandez. Top of the order now, Jesus Feliciano, who's two for three. In total 180 <laughs> differences. Yeah. But you know what? It's still pitching both ways. Drew Storm getting ready. Levon's spot to bat due up third in the seventh. It's probably the only way he stays in the game is if Desmond or Nieves are both score before he gets up to bat. Approaching 110 pitches now. Hot shot to second. Guzman gets behind it. And a one, two, three, and an outstanding night by Levon Hernandez. Desmond leads off. It's time to stretch in DC. Medicine over there and more medical supplies and he has done such a wonderful job giving back and on the field Jim Riddleman said he's also lent a hand wherever the team has needed him which has been terrific Bob. Yeah he's been a mercy mission of his own <laughs> in several instances where the Nats gave up a lot of runs early oh, in ball yeah. games Rob he's fulfilled every role in that bullpen including closer 
He has a save this year. Well, and probably a uh, a nice open ear for some of the guys when they have struggled to listen to. He's a wonderful guy to have around on the ball field. There's two and zero to Desmond. Sure the younger guys bounce stuff off of him all the time. He and Matt Caps are like the two pop bears down there in the bullpen. Well hit right side and Desmond has a two hit night. Jim Riggleman gave him two games off. He's come back tonight. Played solidly in the field and has two well hit balls. Missing a homer by inches last time up. Well, would have been tied up if this had left the ballpark. Did not. Top of the wall comes back. You see Chris Carter right there. The ball kind of hits him. It's a double, but weren't able to cash him in before. It's like a young man possessed tonight. Did. Well, Parsh went in to look at it. It was no doubt in the ballpark. Despite what the play-by-play -play announcer said at that time, I didn't hear anything. No, it's an announcer's worst nightmare to call a home run that's not. And I apologize for that. And it's too bad the Nats could not knock the run in. They had the runner at second base with nobody out. Will Nieves has walked. He's 0 for 1. Pinch hitter coming up next. Right now it's Alberto Gonzalez, but we'll see how it goes here. Well, the Ibis lays one down. Santana has to go to first. And the Nationals, who came in this year into this ball game with a punt success race of 66%, have been flawless tonight. Bob, let's break down Santana and what our right-handed hitters have to see because he stands on the third base side of the rubber. You see this guy right there. And if you freeze it, he looks directly right here. So when he throws that ball, the ball is going to go right here and then fade over there at the end. So if you roll it, just sees it, it comes back across the plate. Now we can't get a good angle from center field because the camera is off center. But from that angle, you can see he's right in front of the right handed hitters. That changeup coming out of the arm slot looks like a fastball. That was a fastball, by the way, that struck him out. He struck out earlier in the game on a changeup down and away, but he is just one tough customer. It's all about arm angles, changing the visual on the hitter. And he's one of the best at doing it. So Levon Hernandez is done, gives up one run in seven innings on seven hits, didn't walk anybody, and struck out a season high seven. 108 pitches, 69 strikes. And I know what Jim Riggleman would call that. He would call that a real clean performance by Levon because he scattered the hits and didn't walk a bat. Our pinch hitters, 105 at bats, Bob hitting 210. 71 on base percentage, eight walks, 20 strikeouts. And Alberto Gonzalez in that department, just three for 20 with an RBI. And you're hoping it happens right here. Because Niger Morgan, who's on deck, has been overmatched by Santana three times. Danger. And I bet you Alberta was trying to hit the ball through second base because Alex Cora was at the bag when that pitch was delivered. Both pitchers have been so focused. That doesn't happen too often to either one. Inside two and one. Pitches more than a couple pitches tonight. Our hitters are lucky that Jim Reynolds has a pretty strict zone. He's been consistent both ways, and you know what to Expect when he hit the plate. Okay. 
Nine o'clock here at Nationals Park. It's the bottom of the seventh. The Mets scored a run at about 15 minutes after seven, and it's been scoreless ever since. Gonzalez in the batter's box, pinch hitting 2 2 with one out and a runner at second base. Ooh, he tosses his bat and he's gone. Each pitcher with seven strikeouts tonight. And Nigel Morgan's going to have to try to find a way to get the bat on the ball here. Well, just a wonderful change up. And Alberto. Open and thinking it might have been a fastball and that deception at the end just tries, tries to throw what they say throwing the bat head out at it. And throws the bat all the way up to third base. Storing for the eighth. That ball gets away. And over to third base, he and Desmond. Well pitched by Johan Santana. Well, he tries to, looks like he overthrows a breaking ball. It's about 59 and a half feet. Gets it by Blanco, who's an excellent def defender back there, by the way. That's a fantastic ball. First time tonight, Niger Morgan's been able to get ahead of Santana in the count. He should have been taking on 2 0. Went a little bit left in the tank. Maybe the best fastball of the night in the low 90s for Santana. Goes for a little walk after that pitch. Beach ball on the field out by the scoreboard. Niger has a 273 batting average after two and one count. And then Jeffrey Kour is smart now. He'll take his spikes. And, de and deflate that ball, which came back on the field. This happens a lot at Dodger Stadium. Dude, these balls. Another 0 for night with runners in scoring position for the Nets. They didn't have a good situational hitting night in Atlanta last evening. Two strikes. Cut down on the swing. Just try to make some contact. This is a fastball. Kinetic right here on the pitch stop. He recognizes it. Choke up on the bat with two strikes. He puts it in play and ties the game. Outstanding. Leveling off and taking the ball beautifully to left field. That gets Lee Bond off the hook. And maybe they can make him a winner with two strikes coming up. Well, that was a great at bat. Earlier in the at bat, when he was still in control, swung hard on a fastball right there. Just put it in play. Use the pitch against the pitcher. He's throwing velocity. So all you got to do is make contact and nice swing, Niger. Niger Morgan's 13th RBI of the year. There's Christian Guzman who hit the ball extremely hard this last time. He didn't come at a better time. That was a clutch hit. What about Santana holding runners, Rob? And Possibly picking people off. How good is he? He's excellent. He's got a wonderful balance point. Sometimes he's kind of deliberate and you can get a good jump off of him, but for the most part, 
makes a living off of holding you at that balance point. See right there when he gets up, lifts that front leg, he's tilting right on the border of going back over the rubber. We call it a balk move because sometimes he's going to come past the rubber over here and go to first base, and he's supposed to go home. That's what makes lefty so deceptive. Your base runner. That's how he went with the slide step where he didn't even have really, didn't come up. So it is okay to deceive you. It's okay <laughs> if you don't get <laughs> Lead run support here, 1-1 one, one ball game, bottom seven. Change up 2 and 0. Oh, and he fell behind Morgan 2 and 0. Both of those pitches, he did the slide step to try to quicken to the plate. And that's what they've worked on with Strasburg, just to kind of bring it back to Steven and what he's doing. You lose velocity, he lost direction, he wasn't able to throw strikes with it. But sometimes it's not a good thing to be too quick to the plate. That's ball three. Good pitch. That time you saw him get the balance point. Be a lot more direct and slow to the plate. Got more behind the ball. Didn't get the call. One one to the plate right there. So even when he's doing the full wind up from the stretch, where he's bringing the leg all the way up, pretty quick to the plate. He has to do that slide step. Right like to the Guzman, who thought it was inside. And you cannot, you cannot get called out on strikes here. Well, 3 1 right here, right down Broadway, might have been low, but still, from the umpire standpoint, that's a good enough pitch to call a strike. Like Bob said, you got to be swinging. Right if here. it's close, you cannot leave Brian Zimmerman in the on deck circle without swinging the bat. You got a battle right here. He swings the bat, hits an easy fly ball to center for Pagan. The Nats will get a leadoff hit by Desmond, a game tying hit by Morgan. 1 1 into the end. So if we can just get back to that, I, I think we've got a fighting chance. And like I said, if we can get back to 
uh, or right around 40 wins and get into single digits as far as being behind the first place ball clubs, uh, I, I think this team's fine. So the homestand presents an opportunity. Ten games coming up, and that's our 11 games under. You're not going to go well, 10 and 0 Dave, and we can, go into the break play 100. 100. If we go six and four, play 600 ball, which we've been doing at home, we got a good shot to, to go into spring, uh, yeah, into the All Star break, ready to fight in the second half. So speed in right field and velocity on the mound as Bernadina and Storin come in. Roger Bernardino batting seven, so that was a straight up move for Michael Morris. And leading off of the Mets in the eighth, Ruben Tejada, he's 0 for 3. Tyler Clippard up and throwing. Caps gets ready quicker than Clippard does. So Clippard, it would appear in the ninth if the game is tied. And of course, if the Nats scored the bottom of the eighth to take a lead after Storin does his job, Matt Caps could be up and ready in an instant. Tejada, Wright, and Davis, two, three, and four for the Mets here in the eighth. Great breaking ball. There's that killer slider. That's the eighth strikeout by the Nats pitching staff tonight. Well, I think we're getting a kind of sluggish Mets team tonight. So enjoy it. I doubt they'll be the sluggish tomorrow night. But they got in late. They've got, uh, as they said, the skeleton crew in there in store and just Tejada. Tejada. No match for Elmer descends. David Wright is 0 for 3. See that late break in the store and slider. David Wright's four game hitting streak at stake tonight came in 10 for his last. 17 and reach that one. one and two. He doesn't go from the wind up. A lot of relievers will go from the stretch even without men on base and keeps you locked in on your breaking stuff. That last pitch 95 miles an hour. Storin throws hard enough, he can get up and in on a big straw. Quick the right hander. Coach, Coach John McLaren. Pitching Coach Steve McCaddy. And the manager Jim Riggleman trying to work hard for a win tonight. Riggleman likes games like this. He likes low scoring, tight, well pitched, well played games. And this one uh, popped up in the short center. Niger coming for it. And coming. And coming. Two outs. Speaking of Niger Morgan tonight, Lowe's home field advantage. Cast your Scots All Star ballot at Lowe's and enter to win a VIP All Star experience. Compliments of Scots. Well, home field advantage on defense. Turns one way, comes back, another picks up the ball, makes a tremendous athletic play in center field. And there we go. The Gooser diving to his left. Getting up quick, get your feet, pick up the big bat done and fired out. So some great defense by Niger and then his clutch hit. Guzzi has been on his game. Here's Ike Davis and we want to remind you one more time. Voting closes tonight at midnight for the All-Star team. Midnight Eastern. Nationals.com cast your votes. Desmond takes care of Davis. A good inning by Drew Storm.
It's a 1-1 ball game, and we're right back with you tomorrow night. Jonathan Neese is 5-2. He takes on Luis Adelano. Neese with a 3-8-4 ERA. Adelano, 4.33. We'll get you going at 6.30. Nats extra. Johnny and Ray here at the ballpark. Game two of the four-game weekend of the series. Well, Elmer descends. Last five outings. No runs, one walk, three punch outs, a 188 batting average against, and that's close to five innings. Ryan Zimmerman leads off. Ryan's hit the ball hard twice tonight, a base hit to right center. Ground ball to short and a laser to right center, caught last time up by Frank Wood. Is pretty well hit to left center, but hanging up. And Feliciano the grab. H.H. H. Craig has some numbers for you regarding tomorrow night's starters. Jonathan Neese, by the way, has only made one career start against the Nets. Four to third innings, and he gave up six runs in that start. Luis Adelano, he finds a way to win more often than not. 13 games, 10 decisions, six of them wins. Hey, Rob, I think it'll be interesting to watch Adelano tomorrow day. How does he follow up his last outing when he threw the ball up in the zone a lot and got some outs? You come right back and do it again. Why not? Why not? I mean, it, I, it's what we said before his last start. Find some pitches that you're getting guys out with and stick with them. Adam Dunn places that one beautifully. Oh, come on, big that Dunn. And that's going to be his 43rd extra base hit of the year. A new personal best for him prior to the All-Star break. He leads the National League in that category. Great swing. He's all about finding a way. Adam Kennedy will come relieve him of his duties for the evening, but got the shift over to the right side of the field. Everybody's absent from the left side of the field, and he just smokes it down the left field line. <laughs> Don't see every team looking for a power hitting corner guy, whether it's corner outfield, corner infield. He's one of the top five sluggers in the game, especially among the first bases. And I don't think there's a big bopper anywhere near him in the organization anywhere in the minor leagues, obviously. So at second base, Kennedy, one out, Willingham and Bernardino will have two shots to get the Nats the lead here. And Matt Caps throwing. He'll pitch the ninth inning, evidently, whether the game is tied or the Nats lead. I'm sure Josh Willingham isn't too sorry to see Santana go. He managed the base hit but struck out the two times around it. Willingham sitting on 44 RBIs. There they are, boys will be boys, and some longer than others. Grown-ups in theaters right now. Two veterans facing each other here, grown-ups, if you will. Descends 39 years of age. And he throws a breaking ball, breaking ball, breaking ball, missing away every time. Well, I mean, he knows. What the book is on Josh Willingham. You don't want to throw him anything from the center of the plate in. So he's going everything soft away, but he's going so far outside that it's easy for Josh to recognize the breaking ball. He's not going to swing at it. He knows he can't hit it, and if he does, it's going to be out. And a dangerous left handed batter on deck after Jim Rippleman made a defensive switch. He had a base open. I don't think that messed with Josh. Four pitch walk, Willingham's 50th walk of the year. Last year, the entire season, Josh walked 61 times, and he's walked 50 now. Here. That's really something. Time running out to vote for your all star selections. We told you it closes at midnight tonight. Nationals.com. You can still vote up to 25 times for your selections. Elmer Descends is gone.
express written consent of the Washington Nationals. Kennedy's at second, Willingham's at first, and Roger Bernardino faces a tough matchup. Pedro Feliciano. Really nothing much Jim Ruggleman could do here. He only has one right-handed bat left, and that's Pudge Rodriguez. Well, and if he's your everyday right fielder, or maybe someday your everyday center fielder, you're going to have to face tough lefties like this. You don't want to be pinch hit for Roger had a good month of June hitting 329. No boxer to the right side. No way to double this guy. A wise move by Tejada not to throw the ball. Kennedy to third. Bernadine now at first base on the fielder's choice. Rip his hands. Feliciano, you know he comes in throwing strikes. Gets a ground ball right there. Cora to Tejada. Tejada. There's no way you're going to double up Bernadina, so you're going to have to get out Desmond here to end the inning. And he has been a tough customer tonight. Ian Desmond, one career plate appearance against Feliciano when he walked. He's hit the ball well twice tonight. Desmond with a double to the bullpen wall in left center, a base hit the other way, scored when Morgan drove him in. And a chance after having two nights off to have a huge impact on this game. You don't have to kill it here. Just try to hit it right back up the box with some authority. A little smoothing of that, and the counts in the hitter's favor. Great shot, overhead shot of Mr. Feliciano. You see him in the first base side. So I'm trying to throw that change up. So that actually helps him. He can start that center of the plate and have a dive outside. Breaking ball, and Desmond turned on him way early. One seven. And O Mets, 1 7 and 0 Nets. The starters both went seven, gave up a run on seven hits, Lehan, a run on six hits, Johan. A ball game even all around. Desmond slaps it to third for David Wright. Mets are out of the inning. This one goes to the ninth in a 1 1 game. Nationals have left nine base runners today.
That's the first base. Caps by a narrow margin now, one save. He still holds on to the major league lead. But his ball club hasn't presented him with many opportunities lately. Hasn't saved the ball club in nine days. Jeff Francoeur leads off top nine. He's 0 for 3. Then comes Angel Pagan and Henry Blanco. Strike. Anthony's outside corner. Frank Gore doesn't like the call. Doesn't like Matt Caps either. <laughs> For six lifetime. Pagan dangerous with speed next. Francisco Rodriguez. Roger Bernardine is old buddy. Roger got the game winning homer off him the last time we saw K Rod. In New York. Caps blows it by Jeff Francoeur. Storen started the eighth with a strikeout. Caps the ninth. <laughs> UPS store here on the high heater. It's track upstairs. Right by him. That's a great execution of a scouting report on Jeff Francoeur. You get two strikes on him, get ahead of him. You don't have to throw it in the box to get him out. Well, not that we're picking on Mr. Franklin, but oh, the execution of that pitch and Tyler Clifford's the best at it on our ball club. Yeah, we have a lot of respect for Jeff Franklin. He's done his share of hurting the Nats over the years. On one pitch, Angel Pagan is gone. It's so difficult for the hitters because they're trying so hard to get themselves ready. Get it loaded and then jump all over 95 mile an hour heat. It, it looks so good coming in, but then as it starts to rise, you've already committed. You need to study a 90 mile an hour fastball. You have an eighth of a second mentally to commit or not commit. Jason Bay for Henry Blanco. Hey, why not? Jerry Manuel has three catchers. This is when you can make this move, hit for a catcher, and you've got. Two more to call on. He's been excellent lately, so with the hot hands, got to win your ball game. Well, the Nats saw him early in the season. He wasn't looking for any power at all. They still not a lot of home runs, six of them in 276 at bats. No, but two watch by the end of the year, he'll have 25 home runs. Good looking breaking ball, just missing. That's a great pitch. But given the outside portion of that side of the plate all night. Up the middle, base hit. Even with his range, Desmond couldn't get there. And Jason Bay pitch hitting for the second time this year delivers his first base hit. Well, it's a fastball that just kind of comes back inside. Bay doesn't get enough of it, but he gets some powerful wood on it. There's Alex Cora. To Guzman. This one heading for the bottom of the night. Mets have stranded seven. It'll be Nieves, the pitcher spot, and then Morgan. 1 1 game.
still on the mound. Angel Feliciano. They were warming up. Francisco Rodriguez, in case they took the lead. For the visiting closer, there's still a save available at, when you go to extra innings. For the home closer, it is not. So here's Will Davis who sacrificed Desmond. Got him to second base in the seventh from where he scored on the base hit. That's all that's left. Willie Harris is going to hit next and then Bud Rodriguez. Save the best for last. Well, in the ball game, the might go extra innings. Managers are reluctant to use their second catcher. In case you're wondering, well, why wouldn't Bud hit next against the left hander? Nashville's one in six in extra innings. So hopefully it doesn't go that far. One run affairs, 12 and 16 for the Nats, 10 and 13 for the Metropolitans. O2 to Nieves when Will takes it outside. It's the only extra inning win is that Willingham walk off homer against the Orioles, huh? So Will with a walk, a grounder, and a sacrifice tonight. Way outside. Luciano goes soft again. Two balls, two strikes. Shortstop. That ball had some serious English on it, and Tejada took care of it for the first down. Willie Harris will be up next. We've got nine more on this home stand. 888 632 Nats for all your ticket information. The red, white, and blue curly W ball cap on Saturday. Strasburg will be pitching at 410. Tickets available for that game. Family fun day on Sunday. This will be a tough matchup for Willie Harris. And that's Finn. You still got some time left to vote for your favorite match for the All-Star game. Put in front of your computer. Start clicking. Willie Harris one for six career against Feliciano. Takes one inside, two and zero. Oh. Tyler Clippard for the tenth, if it goes that far. They're in the top of the eighth at Pittsburgh. The Phillies are still trailing their ball game, three two. As mentioned earlier. Marlins at Braves tomorrow night. Really way late for that one, two and two. Oh, I think he's trying to track it a little bit longer. Louisiana so tough on left-handed hitters. Drop down, he can create the sidearm curve, underhand curve, three fastballs from down there, sinkers from down there. That's why he's on the cover of the yearbook, too, by the way. Media guy. Such a valuable part of this team. From the side, see if he goes across, no chance. No, he didn't. 
That's into base runner any way possible. That'll help. It's over, but low ball four. Winning runs on base with one out in the night. Well, hopefully Willie's starting to heat up at 250 over the last week. Five overall, but he's not had steady work this year. Niger Morgan one for four with a key base hit last time. Two outs, runner at third to tie the game in the seventh. And you have great speed in the batter's box and at first base. Morgan drags it right side. Race to the back. Niger Morgan with a punt hit. First and second one out. Now that's being a weapon. Well, we've often talked about this when Niger started to lay it down to the right side, how difficult it would be to throw him out. That's not even close. Second one hit to the right side in the last few games for Niger. That's a do or die play for the pitcher. He couldn't do it. And the Mets will talk it over. I mean, it's just such a wonderful play. You know, you just got to get it a little bit by the pitcher. There's no way the first baseman coming in can grab it and then get enough velocity on it to throw night drop. He's too quick. Dan Warren, pitching coach, out to talk about pitching and defense. Oakland umpire Jim Reynolds on his way to break it up. And for the Mets, so Ryota Igarashi. Two on, one out. Winning runs at second base. Guzman one for four. And as Rob has said several times this week, much better from the right side. Has a body of work this year. Came in hitting 363 from this side of the plate. Outfield can't play too deep here. They know the speeds at second base. Breaking ball inside. Well, and with a guy that, that throws so many different pitches, I think they just all wanted to get the infield on the same page. How are you going to attack Guzman? That way they can set the defense up accordingly. Way outside. Luciano's had a strange release point on that changeup at times. Be careful, Rob, that that ball was not caught. Yeah. And Zimmerman will step in with a chance to win it. Guzman, second hit of the night. Well, he just crushes this ball right there. It looks like a fastball from down under. And as we said, just hit way too close to Carter to try and score. Well, as I mentioned, the outfield was not playing deep. They were in a little bit. And that put Feliciano closer to that ball on the hop. And here comes Jerry Manuel to make a pitching change. Yeah, he can just leave Feliciano out there with his right hand up. So Feliciano goes one inning, gives up a walk and two hits.
Harley Harris a key walk in a pinch hitting appearance. Morgan's fun hit. Guzman's base hit. Willie's the winning run. Horizon Bios presents Nats Extra when the game is over. Live with the manager, Ian Desmond had a good night in the field and at the plate. And Johnny and Ray will look ahead to Luis Adelano and Jonathan Neese tomorrow night. Ryota Igarashi signed a two year, $3 million free agent contract with the Mets December 17th after 11 years in Japan. Ryan Zimmerman hitting over 300 with runners on base. This pitcher has been a reliever exclusively in his career. 507 relief appearances. Ryan Zimmerman has never faced him. The Nats in this situation are blessed with speed on every base. Zimmerman one for four tonight. He's hit the ball hard twice. Picked up two RBIs in Atlanta in the win on Tuesday night. And he's looking for number 40 right here. The Mets are playing five infielders and two outfielders. <laughs> they brought an outfielder in to play near the second base bag. That's why it looks like a fire drill out there. Last time I saw this was Joe Madden in the World Series game with the Phillies. They don't want a ground ball to go through. That's a breaking ball that misses. There are three infielders between second and third base. <laughs> this looks like a spring training drill. They well, figure if Zimmerman hits it into the outfield. If he hits it into the outfield, they figure he's going to hit it far enough. But what if he hits a little flare to left? The drops where the left fielder should have been. Ball two. Yeah. And that's the worst scenario that you don't even think about with Jerry Manuel. Yeah, what if he falls behind and has to throw the ball right over the plate? Or he walks in. The way. He got Carter played shortstop or left hander in high school or maybe even before. Yeah, how about that? Too many lefty shortstops. Zimmerman in the air to right. Frank Gore's got a great arm. Harris with speed at third. Here he comes. Here comes the throw. This game is over. Are a surprising six and three against the Mets this year. Well, that was a well executed, well pitched, well played, well defended ball game in the last couple of nights. Not on the winning end yesterday, but some great signs. Sim hitting the heck out of the ball to the right side. Frank Ford gets it. The four drive of the game is a sack fly to right field. Willie Hot Rod Harris with a huge pinch hit walk. Great job tonight. Matt Caps wins his first game as a Washington National after pitching a scoreless night. He's smiling. Two hours and 43 minutes. And as Rob said, well pitched, well played. And one timely hit from Niger Morgan tonight. Lots of two. Niger with a nice bunt, Guzman a hit, and here's Debbie with Ryan Zimmerman. Okay, thank you very much, Bob. And Ryan's some really good at bats there in the ninth inning. Yeah, I think uh, we had good at bats all night. I mean, Johan's obviously tough all the time, but Levo matched him, and that uh, was a big win for us. What was it like for you to be out there seeing the five infielders? Hit in the air, I think, is uh, what you're trying to do, but uh, I've never seen that before. 
This was a really nice way to start this homestand, wasn't it? You said Levo pitched well, and this could be the start of good things in the first day in July. Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, we're on the right track. I think we need to win these close games, and tonight's a start, and we'll just uh, roll from here. Okay, thank you very much, Ryan Zimmerman. Let's go back to you, Bob. Thank you, Debbie Taylor. And for Rob Dibble, Bob Carpenter, the final, the Nats, with a walk-off to the Mets 1. Join us tomorrow night, Mass in 2 HD. Will the Nats continue with Game 2? We'll get you going with Johnny and Ray at 630. This has been a presentation of Masson. Stay tuned for Rise and Fios Nats Extra coming up with Johnny and Ray at the ballpark. Two hours and 43 minutes. The homestand off to a great start. And from the booth, so long for just a while.